Joining me here on set, Senator Cory Booker, who was in Jerusalem, I should note, when the attack on Saturday began. New Jersey Democrat was forced to take cover as Hamas unleashed its killing spree. Obviously, I want to talk about what that experience was like. But this chaos that is happening on Capitol Hill obviously has consequences. Things like aid to Israel, aid to Ukraine, all on the line. I mean, what do you make of, of the fact that they can't find a House speaker? I mean, it has a stunning implication for what our country can do in a time of crisis. Let's be clear. The partisanship uh, that often rankles our country is not present here. The majority of House uh, Republicans, majority of House Democrats, majority of Senate Republicans Democrats want to support Ukraine. They want to stand by our ally Israel. They even want to fund the government. So to have a small group of House members uh, that are so extreme right now that they're undermining the ability of the United States uh, the United States Congress, the Article One branch of Congress, to respond to this crisis is very frustrating. I mean, and you saw it firsthand. I mean, you were in Jerusalem on Saturday when this happened. Can you just walk me through what that was even like to be there as the warning signs started to show of what was really unfolding? So I went there to meet with Palestinian leaders and Israeli leaders and then move on throughout the Middle East because there is an effort going to normalization centering the Palestinian in these, Palestinians in these discussions that's more hopeful than I've ever seen in my lifetime. The night before I was there, I got there early because I wanted to spend Shabbat with friends. It was Simchas Torah, a holiday that's very important to me. I was dancing with the Torah. My host for that evening, the, the friend that I brought with me, uh, by the next morning, their family members were being killed. Uh, I'm out running and I've never had a call like that in my life. Get back to the hotel. The rockets have been launched towards uh, Israel. And then it was a holiday, and to have these filled bomb shelters with children and parents all gathered together, some Americans who can't look at their phones, leaning on you for information about what's going on. And the more you look, the more the horrors, the staggering implications. So they're learning from you what was going on. It, it, it was um, just horrific and grotesque. And then. It, just imagine living in a country where it's so small that you're one degree separated from people that are being murdered. I have a friend with me tonight in the studio who lost in uh, Kafar, the, the kibbutz, who lost her niece, niece's husband, children locked in a closet praying that they would be able to survive, which these two boys did. The stories are a lot more intimate and personal uh, to people who are that connected to the violence or, God forbid, who lost their lives or their family members did. You and your staff were able to get out, obviously, leaving Israel at the time that so much is going on there. There are a lot of Americans who have been in Israel desperately trying to get out, but domestic airlines have been canceling so many of the flights in and out of Israel. The U.S. is going to start chartering flights tomorrow, the White House announced today, but should they have done that sooner, do you think? You know, I've talked to State Department officials literally as the rockets were being launched until now. This is an extraordinary amount of effort that's been going on to get people out. I'm glad that they're now doing chartered flights. They're going to be taking other efforts. There are efforts to, to support Americans that are stuck in the in Gaza right now and find ways to get those Americans out. So the state Which is incredibly difficult. Look, what Hamas has done, this terrorist organization that in its very charter is not to stand against the state of Israel. Their charter is to kill Jews. We need to be clear. This organization in their founding was not about Israel, we are killing Jews. It's a hate organization reminiscent of ISIS or even, even the Nazis. And there, before we even get to this decade, any time the Palestinian people had meaningful progress with Israelis towards real peace, remember right after the Oslo Accords, where you have a Palestinian leader and a Israeli leader winning the Nobel Peace Prize, what is this hate organization's response? to begin an unprecedented efforts to bomb civilians, buses, killing and murdering uh, the Israel, Israeli people. And so at a time when I was hopeful, on my way to celebrate a holiday and then move through the Middle East, meeting with Arab leaders, Israeli leaders, Palestinian leaders, on this extraordinary effort building upon the Abraham Accords, when you have the leader of Saudi Arabia on Fox News saying every day we are getting closer and the Palestinian people are, are the critical element. When I talked to the State Department, mm -hmm. when I talked to others, the Palestinians were a key part. Having meetings, they hadn't, Saudis had not been to the West Bank since 1967, and they're now getting together was talking about this deal. This hate-filled organization targeted civilians, 
killed and murdered, not just Americans, Brazilians, Argentinians, French, not just Israelis. It is the most heinous attempt to upend human rights, security and dignity of Israelis and Palestinians. Do you think part of it was to, because I spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu three weeks ago, he was very hopeful that they were on the cusp of a deal. That deal would have reshaped the Middle East. I mean, do you think that that deal is still possible now though? So I'm going back to, uh, in about a week in a, in a very small group of bipartisan senators to Saudi Arabia. I, I left Israel on a mission. I was not going to let the terrorists stop our efforts to go to Bahrain, mm -hmm. to go to UAE. I, I continued my talks with high-level leaders there. And let me tell you, in those countries, from business people, media, everyone knew what Hamas was about. That this is an evil organization, not representing what is best for the human rights and dignity of the Palestinians. In fact, they saw them as frustrating elements to peace and security and a two-state solution. And so I'm not letting that progress stop. I talked to the State Department uh, um, today. I talked to the President of the United States twice in the last few days. Everyone is determined not just to meet this crisis, stand with Israel and their right to self-defense, but to continue the work to get dignity and security for everyone in the region. Well, one question about this, though, has been what the Deputy Treasury Secretary told House Democrats today, which is he says the U.S. government, Qatar, came to an agreement that the $6 billion in Iranian funds that came from South Korea won't be touched, that basically it's been put on ice. Do you think it should stay frozen? I think we should be doing everything we can to end this organization of Hamas. I don't think any of these dollars- Which the way Iran, Iran funds? Iran funds. Look, the, the Qataris who are playing a constructive role, they have to self-examine. There are Ham Hamas leaders living in Qatar. There, there are a lot that we have to get to the bottom of. But there should be no confusion in the United States of America. There should be no equivocation. This is an organization, Hamas, that is focused on destroying pathways to peace, killing civilians, and perpetrating hate. Look at Amnesty International's reports about what this organization has done, the brutalizing, the kidnapping, the killing of Palestinians. This organization must end. And we should have moral clarity in this country, bipartisan for people who love uh, uh, children, love Palestinian children, love Israeli children. This is a moral moment where we need clarity and focus. One, to stop terrorists, whether they're ISIS or Hamas, to stop people who live and focus on hate, but to embrace constructive, real pathways to peace. And this is historic. And you're in my lifetime. We have never had regional leaders, Arab leaders, Muslim leaders, and by the way, Hamas is destructive of Islam and Islam's principles. We've never seen a, a moment like this where you have such an accord of, of, of nations that want to find a pathway to peace and normalization in the region. And I'll tell you what, you know who doesn't want it? Iran doesn't want it. You know who doesn't want it? Hezbollah doesn't want it. You know who doesn't want it? Hamas doesn't want it. So we should fight for Palestinian dignity and security. We should fight for Israel's, stand unequivocally by Israel's right to exist, right to defend itself. But we should be embracing this pathway to peace that right now has a diverse actors. I'm not giving up. That's why I'm going back to the region uh, uh, in a matter of days with, with Republicans, Republicans and Democrats from the Senate. Yeah, we'll see if it remains intact. Senator Cory Booker, glad you're safe. Glad you're here to join us tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.